Armin versus Oliveira. There's a lot on that announcement, guys. And I, I, I will admit that I am with the majority of you that that fight is never going to happen. I will admit that that is the... I, I strongly lean towards that, but there are a few things that are a perk. I mean, by example, it's UFC 300. That isn't guaranteed to be main card. So the pressure could be much less, is what I'm sharing for you. It'd be three rounds, which is a very different environment that a former champion would have to, to deal with. The stakes appear to be tests that Charles has been given before and he's passed. So there's, there's just certain things about it. And I hope that made sense to you guys because I can't say it a lot better. I may attempt to give you a different example if you're sports guys. And I'll personalize it and just use myself. You were not going to beat me if it was the semifinals. The end. Hard stop. Any way you want to do it. MMA, collegiate, Greco-Roman freestyle. Any tournament in the world. The last guy you want in the semis is me. And I don't know that I could overly tell you why. There was something about that round. There was something about that environment. There was something about the pressure or the stakes or the lack of pressure and the lack of stakes. I don't know why. But I'll just share that with you. And you'll have some other guys where, you know, you want to catch them early. You want them first round. That's your biggest shot. They're slow starters by example. And there's just certain athletes that are certain ways. There was something about number one contenders match. Much like there was something for me about semifinals that rings well with Oliveira. There's some about that that he doesn't mind. So I do admit that I am, I am with you guys. The, the likelihood of that match happening is not great. But it's not as low as you might think. There's some things about it that I think Charles would really like. And moreover, moreover is, how does Charles find motivation in number one contenders matches when it draws him to the only thing he doesn't want? And I'm not, guys, I'm really not giving Charles a hard time. I mean, thank God in heaven, I'm the one that was right. I've been telling you guys, I've been telling you for five months, I got to read your comments, Shale, you're so hard on Charles. I'm right about Charles. I understand him. I don't pick on him at all. He's great. He's proven he's great. He's the second best fighter in the division. He has proven he's the second best fighter in the division. That's pretty damn impressive. But what I'm sharing with you, there's, there's one thing that he does not want. This isn't Chael's I got my opinion from him. He told me this three times. And then I just told you guys that he doesn't want to fight Islam. He doesn't want to fight Islam to, to the degree that he has refused to fight Islam. And he started with that in private. And his coach came out and told the world that he was offered Islam. And that he said, no, that was the very first Volkanovsky fight. And I know you think I'm forgetting and I'm telling you the story of the second fight. It's the story of the second fight as well. But the first fight was offered to Charles. Who said no. It went to Volk. And then you lined up the second fight extremely begrudgingly by Charles. And you got the paper cut and you got the, I mean, I, look, i start something here, but. They're self-administered wounds, guys. Right? I mean, and it's not the first time. Oh, shit. He just doesn't want to fight Islam. So, and we were told he was going to have to. He's going to fight it. We, we just kept getting told that. So it was such refreshing news to hear that he's being booked and it's against somebody else. But the surprise was that the winner takes on Islam. And I only bring that to you because when he went in to fight Benny, they said the same thing. And Charles had one of his great performances. And I just find like those, those are kind of oxymorons. Just an interesting observation by me. I'm not going any further with my point than that. The one guy he doesn't want to fight is Islam. If you win this fight, you get drawn into Islam. It's a tough spot. And then he goes out and performs so well. You know, that's, his, that's the round. That's his semifinal round, if you will. These number one contenderships, particularly when they're three rounds. It's, it's a very interesting psychology. And what do we do from there and where do we go? But again, I, I think that lends to the idea that he will do the fight. That's the part where I got to push back against the community that's, that's saying, no, that it's never going to happen. I, I don't agree. Ian, there we go. He doesn't want to fight Islam. I don't think he cares who the opponent is, as long as it's not Islam. 
I'm, I'm like this is this is a very tough draw. I get that, but so was Darouche, and so was Ferguson, and so was Jim Miller. I mean, I could play his whole career has been very hard. He doesn't seem to mind those things. So I'm optimistic about it. I think there's some some real potential there, and. We also learned something else with this announcement, which is if he's not next for Islam, okay, great. It looks like Gaethje must be going against Islam. I know that that was a belief, at least on social media, for about five minutes, but it turned out that no, that it really is a Ramadan thing. Islam's just not fighting. So if you want someone to fight, go ahead and get on with it. He's available on these later dates. It's not Gaethje. That's the point that I'm trying to make, which I think does lend back to the idea that the conversations of Gaethje and Max are getting a little bit closer to being finalized. Gaethje and Max, speculation at best. But that was my immediate reaction to hearing that Charles was fighting at 300, not with Islam. 